This is QTV News. I am Maria Tusidibe and thanks for joining us. First, the main local, business and international news headlines. In local news, as the coronavirus spread to several countries, we hear about preparations the Gambe Health Authorities are making. A member of the Haki Katul Munawara Muslim sect, Yunusa Sise, on Wednesday told commissioners at the TRRC about how forces of the Jame regime arrested their leader and also chased people out of his village. Transforming a wasteland into a nature park, we hear about a perfect example of eco-disaster risk reduction in Kenya. And the newly registered Pediatric Association of the Gambia has been inaugurated. In business news, the coronavirus epidemic threatens global economy. In international news, Greece authorities plan to build a barrier in the sea to stop migrants entering the country. And now, the local news in detail. Gambia's health authorities say they are making preparations for the coronavirus outbreak, which started in China, spreading to several countries. Nearly 6,000 people are infected and has killed more than 100 people in China since the first case was detected on January 7th. Mumuru Gajaga has more. The coronavirus has spread to several countries with suspected cases in Ethiopia, Kenya and Ivory Coast. Governments across the world are on alert since the outbreak. Some countries, such as the United States of America, the United Kingdom and France already started or planning to evacuate their citizens from Wuhan province in China. Gambian health authorities say they are on high alert and preparing in case of any eventualities. We are aware and we are also doing our own part as the Minister of Health of the Gambia. And uh, this involves sharing of information with stakeholders, partners, communities at all levels. And we are also collaborating with our international collaborators like the World Health Organization, the West Africa Health Organization and the Africa Union's Africa's Center for Disease Control. Two days ago, a Gambian student, Idrissa M. L. Mane, studying language and information technology at Hunan University in China, returned to the Gambia. He says he was thoroughly screened at the airport in China and Morocco during transit. Arriving at the Banjul International Airport, he says no screening was conducted on him or other passengers. To be honest with you, when I came to Gambia, I didn't see anything, and I even asked where are the health officers. And uh, the guy that I asked, he said, uh, no one is here. I said, well, I'm from China, and uh, they screened me in the Morocco. So I don't know, after that screening, I might got con in contact with someone. I don't know, maybe that person may got the coronavirus. So I just want to hand over myself to uh, the health personnel, maybe to, uh, to get screened again, and uh, so that my family is also safe. But he said no one is there. So I was like, honestly, I was really disappointed. Amadou Wuri Jalo, Senior Epidemiology and Disease Surveillance Officer, says a camera is at the Banjul International Airport that can check body temperatures. However, he added that the signs and symptoms of the coronavirus can take between 2 to 14 days to manifest. That doesn't mean nothing is happening. The issue is at the airport, for example, we have thermographic cameras that are set there to read the temperature of individuals but also we want we need to remember that some people even if they are infected it may take between 2 to 14 days before they develop the signs and symptoms Gambia and China has a bilateral cooperation and many Gambian students are currently studying in China and some businessmen and women also travel to China to buy products the city of Wuhan in China, where the coronavirus was detected, is on a lockdown, meaning people cannot go about their normal business. Idris M. L. Mane has just returned from China. He described conditions there as difficult. Some of them, you know, it, it is really difficult for them at this time because they don't have access to uh, 
not like a hundred percent access to food because it's really difficult. Someone who cannot access a bank, you know, because they have their money in the banks and banks are closed because they can only use cash to buy, you know, food. And uh, there are WeChat money that uh, the app that we use for online transaction payment, every, like their money have exhausted their monies. So it's really difficult, you know, to get food. The virus has spread across China and to at least 16 countries globally. The Ministry of Health in the Gambia in a press release, advised the general public to remain calm and continue on their daily activities. However, people are advised to be cautious and report all unusual respiratory symptoms and other related illnesses to the nearest health facilities. People can also call a toll-free number 1025 for more information about the coronavirus. Omudu Kajaga, QTV News. A member of the Hake Katul Munawara Muslim sect, Yunisa Sise, on Wednesday appears before the Truth, Reconciliation and Reparations Commission. Mr. Sise explains how forces of the Jame regime arrested their leader and also chased and terrorized people from his village. Babu Karsi reports. Yunisa Sise, a follower of Mohammed Habibullah Seka, known to many as Serindigal, told the commissioners that his marabou used to receive revelations from God. He said their sect's way of worshipping God as Muslims is different from the normal way of practice as they focus more on zikr rather than observing the five daily prayers. He said the Sariyatul Mutaharat changed their way of worshipping in 2002 to Hakikatul Munawar when their leader Sering Digal stopped praying five times a day and specialized in doing zikr, according to Yunus Asise. Their sect leader, Ndigal, was arrested in October 2002 by security officers led by Tatin Baji, and the marabou was accused of dealing in fake currency and also amassed weapons meant to overthrow the government of Yaya Jame. Serin Ndigal, the marabou, was taken to the serious crime unit in Banjul where he was detained for 21 days before the matter was taken to court. After that, it was uh, that time that they took the matter to the court. When he was taken to the court, what happened eventually was the court freed him. And after he was freed, that's the time he went back home to Kermut Ali. Yunus Asise said it was Serin Digal's own brothers who reported him to the police falsely accusing Digal of unfounded accusations. In another occasion, Mr. Sise said Serin Digal was also arrested when he traveled to the combos with a large crowd of followers. This time, he said, the marabou was accused of not having a permit to travel with such a crowd. When Serin Digal died, his eldest son took over and maintained his father's legacy until 2009 when the former leader's brothers came from Senegal, accompanied by the then governor of CRR and other local government authorities, saying they want to renovate the village mosque. When they refused, Mr. Caesar said the local authorities ordered the paramilitary officers to guard the place while the renovation exercise was conducted. Yunus Caesar accused the paramilitary and local authorities of forcing the villagers to pay allegiance to Sering Alu, who was chosen by the government authorities to be their leader. Anyone who refused to pledge allegiance to the new share is punished. So, Banye, if you refuse, para the paras get hold of you, they will take you away and beat you severely. And, uh, and I heard that there was one woman who was caught and made to uh, detained at one place and two men came and abused her. You mean she was sexually abused? Sexually abused, not once, not twice, according to sources. Mr. Sise further told the commission that he was told that the youth of the village were beaten by the paramilitary and their women were also sexually assaulted. As a result, Hundreds of people, both young and old, fled the village and seek refuge in neighboring Senegal. Babu Karsi, QTV News. A wasteland used to be an old quarry has been transformed into a nature park in Kenya. As a perfect example of eco-disaster risk reduction, the park is now booming with a variety of plant and animal species and has become a major tourist attraction. 
Our reporter, Jane Abosonko, visited Hala Park in Mombasa, and this is a report. Originally called the Bamburi Nature Trail, Hala Park is a nature park in Bamburi, Mombasa, on the Kenyan coast. It is the transformation of a quarry wasteland into an ecological area. It has recently been renamed Hala Park in honor of Dr. Rene Hala in recognition for his work made in conjunction with the Bamburi Portland Cement Company for transforming their abandoned quarry into the ecological area. The park holds a variety of plant and animal species which serve as a recreation spot for tourists and locals. The Hala Park is one of the perfect examples of eco-disaster risk reduction in Kenya, which is the sustainable management, conservation and restoration of ecosystems to reduce disaster risk, with the aim to achieve sustainable and resilient development. Well, EcoDR, also known as Ecosystem-Based Disaster Risk Reduction, is definitely a viable solution for disaster risk reduction. Um, first of all, because degradation of ecosystem contribute to when underlying risk of disasters. And then, of course, healthy ecosystems are very important in protecting communities as a barriers, as well as contributing to resilience, for example, by supporting livelihoods. Eco-disaster risk reduction is, however, a very rare approach to disaster risk reduction. People do not know that it exists as an alternative or as a contributing solution to disaster risk reduction. And then second of all, they don't know how to put it into practice. Where do you start? What are the tools available? And how do you put it in practice? How do you scale it up? And then the third factor that is very important is that ECODR requires multiple actors to come together. So people working in the environmental field, in the disaster risk reduction field and climate change adaptation. And very often you need to ensure there is intersectoral communication first of all, to share the experiences and expertise and then of course communication which is not always that easy because different actors work differently. Apart from contributing to disaster risk reduction, the park also helps in creating employment and also a big tourist attraction. For this forest, this place, it's uh, special because I think so for Africa, for Kenya, it's number one because uh, we are here, here clean and uh, many people, they work with tourists and they, they try to be like open Kenya for more tourism. In the Gambia, the backwater dump site is situated in a residential area causing pollution and environmental problems. Hala Park is a perfect example of what the backwater dump site can be transformed into to create employment, attract tourists and contribute to the socio-economic development of the Gambia. Reporting for QTV News in Mombasa, Kenya, I am Jenna Basonko. The Pediatric Association of the Gambia was recently inaugurated at the local hotel in Banjul. The newly registered association comprises of healthcare professionals, institutions and other members of the public. Ajibinto Drame reports. The Pediatric Association of the Gambia aims to foster the health and development needs of children in the form of advocacy, public education, research, innovation and training. The association also aims to help pregnant women and reduce the rate of maternal mortality and infant mortality, especially neonatal deaths in the country. Dr. Adam Asala, president of Pediatric Association, explained that their activities will be decentralized for everyone to have access to health screening and seminars will be organized to sensitize the public. We have also agreed to conduct regular training programs at least two, two big sessions a year. And locally, the, the local association will also be conducting training sessions at least every quarter, in addition to seminars and other things that uh, might make a meaningful contribution in our quest to improve the, the conditions of mothers and their children. Mustafa Abite, a representative from the Ministry of Health, says his ministry is willing to work with the association to help reduce infant mortality rate. He added that concerted efforts are needed to develop the health sector. 
Uriak Okomo, Vice President of West African College of Physicians, the Gambia chapter, says there is inadequate pediatric nurses in the country and more training is needed. There's up to 80,000 births per year. Six qualified pediatricians, I'm sure you'll agree, is grossly inadequate. We have a few who are in training. Some have just returned. But this number is very small. Rohim Malik Loh, mayoress of Banjul, says she is making efforts to get more equipment to help improve the health sector. And just recently, in one of my visits in Atlanta, USA, I was able to negotiate a very huge amount worth of medicine and equipment, which will soon, inshallah Allah, be beneficial to the hospital. And I will keep advocating for technological advancement in the health sector as it plays a crucial role in sustaining health. Halifa Sala, a National Assembly member, sheds light on the perspective of children and society. The child and knowing the importance of the child, human society has started to explore who this child is and what the child needs. And all are united that human society cannot continue to exist unless the right of the child to existence, protection and development is guaranteed. According to UN interagency estimates, the global maternal mortality ratio declined by 38% from 342 deaths to 211 deaths per 100,000 lives birth from 2000 to 2017. This translates into an average annual rate of reduction of 2.9%. Ajibintu Drame, QTV News. West African Health Organization, WAHO, in collaboration with the Ministry of Health on Tuesday, held its 10th Regional Forum on Health Information and Management. The forum is to discuss matters contained in the new year 2020. Ajibintu Drame reports. The 10th Annual Meeting of National Managers of Health Management Information System WAHO Technical and Financial Partners is to promote the production, sharing and use of quality health information in the ECOWAS region. It is also a regional platform used to highlight and discuss epidemic-prone disease such as malaria and also the fight against maternal death. Dr. Desta A. Tiruna, the WHO representative in the Gambia, emphasized on the mandate of the World Health Organization in the Gambia. Mr. Chair, Ladies and gentlemen, supporting the generation and use of health statistics, information and intelligence is part of the core mandate of WHO. In the Gambia, WHO, in collaboration with the health partners, including USAID, UNFP, UNICEF, and the Global Fund, undertook a health information assessment as part of the first comprehensive health system assessment completed last year. The recommendations of the assessment are now being used in policy dialogue, progress to implement key health system reforms. The Director of Healthcare Services at WAHO, Dr. Kofi Bosa, explains the significance of the health information management systems. In a row, this meeting is held on a regular basis. Over the years, important achievements have been uh, made possible at the regional level, but also at country level when it comes to information health systems management. Several countries were able to reform their systems and several countries have adopted tools and more appropriate technologies uh, for data collection, data management and data sh uh, sharing. Modula Minjaite, Permanent Secretary Ministry of Health, states the importance of the forum. This meeting is quite significant in the sense that the subregion is working collectively and earnestly in gaining momentum in combating diseases that could threaten the health and well-being of our populations. 
The forum brought together senior officials of the Ministry of Health, regional health experts, researchers and managers of training and research institutions involved in the health sector. And you've been to Drama QTV News. We will go with a short commercial break and when we return, we'll find out why millions of fruit bats gathered at Zambia's National Park and coronavirus epidemic is the global economy under threat. Join us after the break for these stories, sports news and more. Oh yes! QSAL has exhausted the number three series, the 505152 and 53 number series. We are expanding and introducing another new number series, starting with 58 and 59. With the 58 and 59 numbers, you can call any QSAL number for the same on net charges. You get the same great service at the exact same charges offered to numbers in the three. 50, 51, 52, and 53 series. The family is even bigger now. For more information, call Customer Care on 111. QSell, we innovate, others follow. Welcome back. In business news, the coronavirus has emerged as a major risk to the global economy. The rapidly spreading coronavirus outbreak in China continues to rattle global markets as investors and policymakers assess the risk posed by the SARS-like virus to the global economy. Stocks around the world took a beating as the death toll from the virus reached 170 and more cases were reported. China, the world's second largest economy, is called the world's factory and plays a key role in global supply chains. The outbreak has caused limited supply chain disruption so far because many facilities were already closed for the Chinese New Year holidays. But there are growing concerns that the factories may remain shut for longer than usual. In international news, Millions of fruit-eating bats have invaded the skies above the Kasanka National Park in northern Zambia. Around 10 million of the animals descend on a small patch of forest in the park in what is thought to be the largest migration of a mammalian species. It is a journey that's still a mystery to scientists. Also in international news, the Greek government has said it wants to install a floating protection system to stop migrant arrivals from the Turkish coast. The system would involve setting up either barriers or nets to be used in emergencies measuring some 2.7 kilometers to stop boats making the crossing. A request for bids from companies capable of building the structure has been published by the Greek Defense Ministry. However, the defense minister said the project will cost 500,000 euros. The government also said it wanted to employ an extra 1,200 border police in coming months to help stem the flow of migrants from Turkey. Greece's conservative government has embarked on a tougher immigration policy since coming to power last year. Here to give us the latest sports news is Momodu Gajaga. Gajaga, we hope you have something interesting for us today. 
Absolutely, Maria too, and thank you very much. We are going to look at Paralympic sports in the Gambia. These are people um, who we often refer to as disabled, but absolutely they are nowhere close to being disabled. Maybe physically, but not mentally, and even in physical terms sometimes when it comes to sports, they are people who need to be counted. Six wheelchairs has been presented to the Gambian National Paralympic Committee earlier today at the Independence Stadium. And this is from Ajitos Foundation. And this is a foundation based in Germany. And the foundation is a development arm of the International Paralympic Committee. In fact, Ajitos is a Latin word which means to move. So it like the Paralympians or the athletes are on the move when it comes to wheelchair racing. And these are athletes who would represent the Gambia in international competitions, whether it is in Africa or at the international stage. Well, um, according to some of them, they believe that these supplies would really help them advance their sports forward. These wheelchairs will boost our competitiveness, both locally and internationally. We've been facing a lot of challenges using substandard wheelchairs for competitions. Getting the support is one thing, but now it is up to us to deliver at the world stage and raise the flag of our country. Now let's hear from the officials. First to begin with Haji Drame, who is the media officer of the Gambian National Paralympic Sports Committee. And later on, you will also hear from Marcel Mendy, the executive director of the Gambia uh, National Sports Council. The leadership of the NPC will always go further, will always go out to seek for support, sponsorship, to help our members from the administrative level, building capacity of our athletes who are going to be the future administrators of this organization and also the current executive body who also need to be capacitized with the basic knowledge of parasports and Paralympic movements. For parasport, you are the hope of this country. If Gambia will win anything, it cannot look elsewhere other than you. So you are very important. The Gambia Paralympics team has participated in the London 2012 Paralympic event and also in the Rio 2016 Paralympic event. And they are also <coughs> looking forward to some sub-regional competitions and finally towards the Olympic Games in Tokyo, Japan later this year. Um, well, we wish them the best of luck. Thank you very much, Gajaga. Disability is not inability. Before we end this bulletin, let's take a quick look at our main stories. In local news, as the coronavirus spread to several countries, we hear about preparations the Gambia Health Authorities are making. A member of the Haki Katul Munawara Muslim sect, Yunusa Sise, on Wednesday told commissioners at the TRRC about how forces of the Jame regime arrested their leader and also chased people out of his village. Transforming a wasteland into a nature park, we hear about a perfect example of eco disaster risk reduction in Kenya. And the newly registered Pediatric Association of the Gambia has been inaugurated. In business news, the coronavirus epidemic threatens global economy. In international news, Greece authorities plan to build a barrier in the sea to stop migrants entering the country. That's all we have for you in this edition of the news. Join us tomorrow for more news. Thank you for watching.